3 Kai Asai Atlas is moving toward our sun, fast. This interstellar wanderer, only the third ever confirmed, is now carving through the inner solar system at nearly 68 kilometers per second. It has already crossed inside the orbit of Mars, its trajectory steep, retrograde, and utterly foreign to the rhythm of our planetary dance. Every kilometer it travels pulls it deeper into the sun's domain, and yet, just as its story reaches its most critical chapter, Earth's telescopes are going blind. Mid-October marks a solar conjunction, the moment when Three A Atlas slips behind the sun, invisible to every observatory, hidden by the glare of a star too bright for even our finest instruments to pierce. You're watching Lumora, where science meets mystery. Tonight, we follow this cosmic intruder on its perilous descent toward the heart of our solar system and the many questions it leaves in its wake. The numbers alone read like a cosmic warning. When astronomers first recorded the object in early July through the Atlas survey, it was already speeding along at 58 kilometers per second. Now, as it races closer to the sun, that speed grows relentlessly. Expected to peak near 68 kilometers per second by October 29th, its perihelion date. At that rate, it could travel from Earth to the moon in just over an hour. Imagine a city-sized fragment from another star system, barreling through our solar neighborhood faster than any spacecraft ever built. Its orbital inclination is 175 degrees, nearly upside down compared to the planet's gentle alignment along the ecliptic plane. This is no local comet. Three Eyeslayer Atlas comes from elsewhere. Its hyperbolic trajectory confirms it will never return. The Minor Planet Center's data shows its eccentricity well above one, a mathematical fingerprint of a visitor that entered our system once and will leave forever. It's a brief crossing through our cosmic backyard, but one that may tell us more about the galaxy theta than years of careful observation. At perihelion, October 29th, 1155 UTC, it will reach just 1.36 astronomical units from the sun, close enough to feel the full force of solar radiation, but not so close as to disintegrate. Unlike sun grazers that burn away in the corona, Atlas will skirt the boundary of intense solar wind and electromagnetic turbulence. Its path takes it through the constellation Virgo, but no human eye will see it then. For weeks, it will vanish, its light swallowed by the sun's blinding disk. As the countdown to conjunction begins, the scientific world holds its breath. Hundreds of telescopes, coordination networks, and emergency observation campaigns have been following Atlas's trail for months. And now, as it disappears behind the sun, we are left with one unavoidable truth. The most mysterious phase of its journey will unfold in complete darkness. When it emerges again, in late November, it may look very different, or it may not appear at all. By October 21st, 2025, 3 I Atlas will slip directly behind the Sun, a celestial alignment known as Superior Conjunction. From Earth, the angle between the comet and the Sun will shrink to zero, leaving astronomers completely blind. It's a blackout, a forced silence across the global network of observatories. For weeks, every telescope on Earth and in orbit will be powerless. The sun's glare will overwhelm even the most sensitive detectors, turning months of planning into waiting and guesswork. Before this blackout, the world's scientific teams have already been racing against time. Over a hundred observing runs have been made across Hawaii, Chile, the Canary Islands, and even orbiters around Mars, all to capture the last fragments of data before the curtain falls. But the geometry is merciless. As the sun's brightness swallows the sky, safety protocols shut down sensitive optics. No one dares to risk billion-dollar instruments for a faint smudge crossing the solar plane. The final reliable observations are expected around October 18th. After that, nothing. Not from the Parker Solar Probe, not from SOHO or STEREO, and not even from Solar Orbiter. These instruments, designed to block the sun's fierce light and expose the faint halo of the corona, can't pick out something as dim as Atlas. At a predicted magnitude of 12, the object is far below their detection limits. The turbulence of the solar wind, the blinding plasma, and the violent electromagnetic field will erase every trace of the comet's faint green glow. But before that silence descends, a few lucky vantage points offer glimpses of what might be the last view of 3 Ate Atlas before its transformation. In early October, Mars orbiters, Mars Express and the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter manage a handful of deep exposure images. 
From their position on the far side of the sun, they catch the faint outline of the coma, a hazy shell of gas and dust surrounding a nucleus too bright and compact to resolve. The tail is invisible, the shape uncertain, the chemistry unknown. But those frames may one day prove invaluable, perhaps the last record before the interstellar visitor enters the sun's electric domain. When the blackout begins, there will be no real-time updates, no light curve data, no spectroscopy, no confirmation of survival. For scientists, it's like watching a spacecraft vanish behind a star, not knowing if it will ever reappear. And yet, within that uncertainty lies, he lies anticipation. The hope that something extraordinary could happen in the unseen space between observation and silence. 3. Atlas is about to cross the most dangerous threshold in the inner solar system. Within days, it will be closer to the sun than any interstellar object ever recorded. What happens in that invisible window, whether it fragments, erupts, or simply endures, could redefine everything we know about cosmic wanderers. Even before the blackout, 3i Atlas was already rewriting the rules of comet science. The first puzzle, its size. Early brightness models hinted at a nucleus anywhere between 5 and 50 kilometers wide, a margin so vast that it confused even veteran observers. But this wasn't a mistake. It was a symptom of mystery. The coma, a thick envelope of dust and gas surrounding the nucleus, was unusually dense and bright, blurring the line between solid and vapor. Even the world's largest telescopes couldn't isolate the true core. What astronomers could measure was only how the light scattered, how the coma thickened, and how fast it expanded as the object neared the sun. Then came the color shift. In June, Atlas appeared reddish, perhaps from complex carbon-rich grains or slow sublimating organic material. But by August, the spectrum turned bright green, so vivid and pure that it stood out even against the harsh glare of the solar wind. Spectroscopic readings from the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope and others revealed the cause. Carbon-based molecules, C2 and Cn radicals, had been released in enormous quantities. In simple terms, the comet was boiling off carbon dioxide, not water. This meant its activity wasn't driven by the same forces that animate normal comets. Atlas wasn't melting, it was changing. For planetary scientists, this revelation was staggering. Most comets erupt because frozen water ice turns to vapor as they warm. But Atlas's behavior suggested an entirely different chemistry, a signature of origin far beyond our sun's influence. If CO2 dominates its structure, it might have formed in the cold void between stars, where carbon-rich molecules condense instead of water. This idea positioned three ISI Atlas as potentially the most alien object ever observed. Yet the chemical oddities didn't stop there. Spectra hinted at a nickel-to-iron ratio that defied expectations, far higher than in any known solar system object. Nickel emission lines glowed brighter than iron, suggesting an origin in regions shaped by supernovae or the remnants of ancient planetary cores. If that holds true, Atlas could be a fragment of a world destroyed before our sun even existed, a piece of another star's story, drifting across light years, now brushing against ours. Even its dust was unusual. Polarimetric studies showed extreme negative polarization, light scattering patterns consistent with ultra-fine metallic or glassy grains, not the silicate-based dust typical of comets here at home. Some observers described its coma as asymmetrical, brightest on the sun-facing side, forming a forward-scattering halo rather than the classic tail streaming away. To some, it looked like Atlas was glowing from within. Was it electrical activity? Was it composition? or something we've never seen before. By the final week before conjunction, Atlas was still brightening, a behavior that made no sense. Most comets fade as they near the sun, losing mass and symmetry. But Atlas seemed to feed on the heat, glowing greener, stronger, as if preparing for something. And then everything went quiet. By late October, three eyes Atlas vanished completely behind the sun's glare. The world's telescopes, both ground-based and orbital, fell silent. The last signals came around October 18th, just before the blackout began. After that, only the solar wind remained, flooding every detector with static and light. It was as if the universe itself had drawn a curtain. Engineers tried everything. They reprocessed terabytes of coronagraph data from SOHO and Stereo. They attempted shift and stack imaging. 
overlaying hundreds of faint frames along the predicted path to amplify any sign of the moving object. In theory, this could reveal something a hundred times dimmer than normal detection limits. In practice, it failed. Atlas was simply too faint, too compact, and too deep inside the sun's radiance to be seen. Even stacking a thousand images couldn't raise the signal above the noise. At magnitude 12, the comet was invisible to every solar instrument ever built. The delicate sensors aboard the Parker Solar Probe and Solar Orbiter were automatically shut down by safety protocols. The risk of exposing them directly to the sun's disk was too great. Ground-based telescopes, even those using adaptive optics and horizon-skimming techniques, saw only blinding haze. Nothing moved, nothing reflected. The blackout was absolute. For a few days, hope shifted to Mars. From there, orbiters had a different vantage point, one that briefly allowed long exposure imaging just before the conjunction. They captured faint, ghost-like smudges of the coma, unresolved but real. Scientists debated whether to redirect more instruments toward the sun, but mission safety prevailed. The chance was gone. And so Earth waited. The silence became almost philosophical. In that invisible gap between October and mid-November, the comet could be undergoing anything. Fragmentation, explosion, transformation, or nothing at all. No one knew. It was a mystery unfolding in pure absence, an event beyond the reach of human observation. Inside laboratories, data teams continued to fight against time. They tested new algorithms, built predictive models, and calculated the smallest gravitational deviations that could hint at post-perihelion change. If Atlas fragmented, its trajectory might wobble. If it survived, its brightness curve would spike upon reappearance. But until mid-November, the data was frozen in uncertainty. For the scientific community, this was more than just a pause. It was a confrontation with the limits of human perception, billions of dollars in technology, thousands of coordinated hours, and yet one small body from beyond the stars had managed to hide completely. When Atlas finally re-emerges from behind the sun sometime around November 20th, it will either confirm our theories or destroy them. As the days of silence fade, the world waits for three eyes Atlas to reappear. By mid to late November, the interstellar traveler will emerge once more, dim, distant, but no longer hidden. When that first light breaks through the solar curtain, astronomers will rush to capture it. Every pixel, every flicker, every spectral trace will matter, because whatever Atlas has become on the far side of the sun will reveal more than any model could predict. Some believe it will fragment, a trail of glowing debris marking its path through the solar wind. Others think it will survive intact, its green hue brighter than ever, charged by the sun's electric field. A few propose something even stranger, that Atlas's passage near perihelion will trigger electromagnetic phenomena unlike anything we've seen before. Among those voices are the electric universe theorists, who suggest that comets like Atlas are not just icy relics but electrically active objects, participants in a vast solar plasma system. To them, perihelion is not merely a point of closest approach, but a high-voltage experiment in motion. As the sun's magnetic field lashes across the object's carbon-rich dust, electric currents could ignite, accelerating particles and reshaping its coma in real time. If that's true, Atlas might emit radio bursts or flashes invisible to ordinary telescopes. Even mainstream astrophysicists admit the data will tell. If its trajectory shifts slightly after perihelion, or if its brightness curve changes unpredictably, the case for electrical interactions will grow stronger. For now, all we can do is wait for the dawn sky to bring back the first post-conjunction readings. And yet, while science wrestles with equations, others look to the stars for meaning. When Atlas threads through the constellation Virgo, astrologers note a rare cosmic alignment, a pattern they interpret as a symbol of transformation and renewal. To them, this event reflects a tension between chaos and rebirth, the old and the new. It is, in their language, a celestial mirror of change. From a purely scientific perspective, such interpretations may seem poetic, but perhaps they serve another purpose. They remind us that even in an age of data and precision, the cosmos still stirs the same ancient wonder it did thousands of years ago. The mystery is not only what we can measure, but what we can imagine. By December, Atlas will make its closest approach to Earth, about 1.8 astronomical units away, faint but traceable to powerful instruments. Its outbound trajectory will soon carry it toward Jupiter by March, 
then back into the dark interstellar void from which it came. And when it finally disappears beyond the reach of our telescopes, one question will remain. What exactly passed through our solar system, and why did it come now? This is Lemora. And the story of Three-Eye Atlas is far from over. Some mysteries don't end, they just slip back into the dark, waiting to be found again.